Welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. So for today's Hermes video we're going to be talking about giving reptiles as gifts. So this is the time of year that you see tons of people on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube saying don't give animals as gifts. Don't give reptiles as gifts. They make horrible gifts. Don't do it. You'll be a horrible person if you do it. Well I have a little bit of a different view. So basically, I'm going to be talking about giving reptiles as gifts. So this might be a little controversial, but just hear me out and you will you might agree with me. So I'm going to start off by saying in most cases, people are right. You wouldn't want to give a reptile as a gift. Look at Arcadius, my iguana. He was a gift to somebody who didn't really want an iguana, wasn't prepared for an iguana, and he ended up with severe metabolic bone disease. So there's a good example of why reptiles shouldn't be given as gifts. But there are ways that it can be done properly. My first reptile was supposed to be a Christmas gift. I had done research and knew what I wanted. My parents were doing research to figure out if it was something they should really get me. Um, I was supposed to get a bearded dragon for Christmas my senior year of high school. The only reason that that fell through was because my parents found out and I kind of found out that I couldn't take a reptile to college with me. There was no animals allowed on campus except for fish. So that's the only reason I pretty much the only reason I didn't get a reptile for Christmas that year. So because of my experience, I would say that reptiles can be a Christmas gift in the right setting. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about when is the right time to give a reptile as a Christmas gift and how to do it properly. So whether you're buying a reptile for a significant other, a child, or a friend, hear me out, listen to what I have to say, and then maybe decide if that is actually a good gift idea or not. So I'm going to cover kind of a general overview, things to think about, important steps to take, and then I'm going to end the video giving you guys some ideas for good reptiles for beginners. So if you're buying for a first time reptile keeper, you're buying for your child or something like that, I'm gonna give you guys some good starter reptile ideas and I'll bring out some of my animals too. So ultimately when buying an animal for somebody like a reptile, communication is the most important thing. So all of the points and things I have to say in the rest of this video, all kind of lead back to communication. So the number one most important thing to make sure that that person you're buying for actually does want a reptile. If they have never mentioned wanting a reptile before, do not buy them a reptile for Christmas. If they have mentioned once or twice that maybe they'd like a reptile, do not even consider it unless you have a conversation with them. If there's someone who is like obsessed with reptiles, absolutely wants one, maybe has like a dream reptile on their list, then consider it. Now, when you are buying a reptile, a lot of consideration has to go into it. If you're buying for a first time reptile keeper, you wanna make sure you are getting an animal that is good for beginners, that isn't gonna have complicated care, it's gonna be straightforward and pretty easy. If you're buying for someone that's had reptiles for a while, maybe you're buying them an animal that's been on their want list, something they really want, then, you know, that's a whole other thing. So you have to kind of know what level the person is that you are buying for, what level of reptile keeper they are, whether it's beginner, advanced, what they are capable of caring for. So the next thing is to know that you might have to do some research. If you are buying for a friend, you need to make sure that friend has done their research. Research is the most important thing next to communication is the research aspect. So if you're buying for a friend, you better make sure that friend has done their research and they know how to care for that animal before you give them that animal. 
You don't want to give someone an animal and they have no idea how to care for it. That's what happened with Arcadius, my iguana. So say you have a friend that has been dying to get a hog nose, but they can't find one anywhere, but they're prepared for it. They know about hog noses. They just need to find one and you get one for them. Then, you know, it's something they want. It's something they're prepared for. It's something that, you know, you know that they're capable of taking care of. If you are buying for a child or for a significant other, not only should they have the research or do the research. Okay, say we're talking about me. I would absolutely love a San Francisco garter snake. They're one of my favorite snakes. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. If my boyfriend were to go get me one right now and give it to me for Christmas, I would know how to care for it. I would have the means to take care of it. That is very important. Now, say I'm getting one for my best friend who has no reptiles, no reptile experience other than coming and seeing mine. I wouldn't go out and get her like an iguana and bring it to her for Christmas and be like, Merry Christmas, here you go, because I know she doesn't have the means to take care of it. She hasn't done research on iguanas and she never voiced that she wanted an iguana. So there's kind of like the two differences. So like I said, not only should they have the research and the knowledge, but if you're giving it for someone that you live with, you should also do the research, especially if it's an animal that maybe they haven't voiced that they want to you or that's going to be their first reptile. You need to also be kind of the expert because you might have to help them ease into caring for it, learn how to care for it. So you should already have all the knowledge, especially if you're buying it for a child. You need to know that that animal is your responsibility. You can say that it is the kid's responsibility all you want, but really it is your responsibility. Now I'll do a whole other video in the future on my opinion on giving kids pets um, or kids having pets. So that's, I don't want to go way too off topic, but I will make another video on that in the future. But just know that if you decide to give your child a reptile for Christmas, that is your reptile and that you committed to giving that reptile a home. You can't just pass it off to your child and when they get sick of it, rehome it. That is not okay in my opinion. You need to make sure that you are committed to that reptile. Now on the note of children, I do recommend maybe waiting to get your child a reptile until they're older. Like I was in high school when my parents were thinking about it. My brother was in high school when he got his bird. My sister was in junior high when she got her cat. I was like four when I got my cats, but my parents helped me take care of them because obviously I was four. So maybe if you're thinking about a child, wait until your child is older and can handle responsibility and it can actually talk to you about what they want and you, can, and you can help them research and kind of get an idea and a feel for what they might want. So ultimately the most important thing is to make sure that it is something the other person wants. You don't want to just surprise them with an animal that they don't want. So even if it's telling them ahead of time that you are getting them an animal, if that's what you have to do to make sure that animal is going to be well cared for, that's what you have to do. So if my mom came to me and was like, hey, we're gonna get you this lizard for Christmas, or we're thinking about getting you this lizard for Christmas, A, do you want it? B, do you have the ability to care for it? C, do you know how to care for it? Sometimes you have to tell the person um, in order to make sure that that animal's gonna be going somewhere that wants it and that can care for it. Now, next, a lot of people think that buying an animal for someone just involves buying the animal. In most cases, no. If you're going to buy an animal for someone, you should buy the whole shebang. You need to make sure it has an enclosure, proper substrate, proper lighting. You need to make sure that that animal has it all. So if you're not giving it to a reptile keeper who's been planning for this animal, that has all the means to take care of it, is waiting to find the animal, already has an enclosure and everything, then you need to make sure that you also buy all of that. So if my parents were to get me that bearded dragon my senior year of high school, they would have had to buy me lighting for it because I didn't have any of that. It would have been my first reptile. So you need to make sure that not only do you gift the animal, but you gift all the supplies that is going to be needed for that animal if the person doesn't already have it all, which is again, where communication is very important. So those are kind of my important like pinpoints of the subject. In most cases, no, you don't want to give an animal as a gift, but it's not really true to say 
animals make horrible gifts, don't give an animal for Christmas. Because there are instances where you can. Like if your friend or your significant other is an avid reptile keeper, then sometimes there is an instant where you can. Or if you have someone that wants to start getting into reptiles, whether it's a significant other or one of your kids, if they want to start getting into reptiles, you can help them into it and then give them that reptile as a Christmas present. But ultimately, communication is key. You need to talk to the person you want to give it to. It cannot be a spur of the moment thing that they are not expecting. They need to be expecting it. Unless it's a child and you're claiming full responsibility for the animal and you're just having that child help you and think that it is their animal. But we need to make sure that all parties are good to go with this animal to make sure the animal has the best life and care possible. So do not unexpectedly give someone a reptile. That is not what I'm saying with this video. Do not do that. That is, that's where problems happen. Make sure the person that wants it is someone that really, really loves reptiles, that really wants whatever reptile or wants to get into reptiles and is ready for it. So it's kind of a spoiler Christmas present. It's something that they're going to be expecting. But that makes sure that the animal is going to have a good home and proper care. So now that I've repeated myself like a million times and kind of gotten that across, I'm going to show you some or talk to you about some of the good starter reptiles. So like for me, for Christmas, I was going to get my first reptile. I was going to get a bearded, bearded dragon. Now that I've been around the block, I don't really recommend bearded dragons as a first time reptile. Um, but that'll be another video. There's another video idea. Perfect. Um, but I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the reptiles I do recommend for beginners. So if you're getting a reptile, it's going to be someone's first reptile and they are fully ready for it and have done research and you've all done research and good to go. You have somewhere to put it. Then here's some ideas. Animal number one is a leopard gecko. Leopard geckos are one of the most beginner basic animals there is. They don't require too much for care. Their care isn't very hard. They do eat bugs. They do need heat. But that's about it. You don't need a huge enclosure. You don't really have to worry about humidity too much other than a humid hide to help them shed. So they are a pretty basic reptile, which would make a great first reptile. And they're really stinking cute. They're easy to handle. Typically they have great personalities. So a leopard gecko would be for sure one that I would recommend, hands down. A leopard gecko is actually my first reptile. Um, technically he's a family reptile. Um, so you guys have met him before. He stays at my parents' house. His name is Zephyr. Um, this is Queso. She's my newest leopard gecko. This one is actually mine because Zephyr is the family leopard gecko. But leopard gecko was my first reptile. It was my intro to reptiles. So I do highly recommend leopard geckos. All right, so say the person you're getting an animal for wants to get into snakes. Maybe they want their first snake. In that case, I highly recommend a corn snake. Corn snakes are typically very, very docile. They are like leopard geckos in the fact that they don't require too much in the way of care. Um, you don't have to worry really about humidity with them. They like it a little drier. And by that, I mean they're not a tropical species. Corn snakes typically stay on small prey items because they're not a very big snake. So it'll be more, it'll be much more inexpensive to feed them than a larger snake. Now, Phoenix here isn't a really good example of a corn snake because she is huge. Um, a lot of times corn snakes will be a little on the smaller side and very easy to handle. Phoenix is kind of a very energetic nut job and she's huge. Um, she was power fed by her last owner. So she grew very quickly and very fast and was very chunky. So, but she is very pretty. Um, the corn snake that I work with at the zoo is very, much smaller than her. He's about the third or she's about the third of her size. Um, and very, very docile, does not move around as much as Phoenix does. And I think he's a better, or she is a better representation of what it's like to have a corn snake. But very docile, very docile snakes. I don't think I've ever heard of a mean corn snake. So great with handling, easy care. So that would be one I'd recommend for a beginner snake. Another beginner snake I'd mention, um, I don't have her with me, but a um, Kenyan sand boa. My Kenyan Samboa is currently back at home at my parents' house because I'm moving home this weekend, but I do recommend Kenyan Samboas. However, 
you have to make sure that the person understands that they won't see that snake very often. Kenyan sand boas love to burrow and spend most of their time burrowed. But they're a great snake because they are very docile and they stay small. They don't get very big. So a Kenyan sandbow would be another great beginner snake as long as as long as understood that you probably won't see that snake very often. <laughs> the last animal I'm gonna mention is a crested gecko. Crested geckos have again a very easy care. They do require humidity. Um, they are a tropical species, so they require a little bit more than a leopard gecko because you have that humidity requirement. Um, but they eat bugs once in a while. Um, and they eat a powdered diet typically. So you can buy food for them in a Ziploc bag, it's powder, you mix it with water and you put in a little dish for them and that is it. So it's very, very easy to care for these guys. Typically, they're pretty easy to handle. They can be fun to handle. They can be a little jumpy. Um, this guy here is pretty good with handling. Pip, my other crested gecko, who was my first crested, crested gecko, is a very jumpy crested gecko. Doesn't really like handling too much, um, but it is pretty fun to handle them because they do or can move quite a bit and they're just pretty cute and they have sticky feet. So it's a lot of, a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. So out of all four animals I just showed you, I do have care guides up for three out of the four. I have a corn snake care guide, a Kenyan sandboa care guide, and a crested gecko care guide. So if you're interested in those three as a beginner reptile for somebody, you can check those out. I, don't, I do not have a leopard gecko care guide yet, however there are tons of great channels on YouTube that cover leopard geckos, so you can check them out for sure. Um, I do have a video introducing my leopard gecko Zephyr, so I do show his enclosure in that if you kind of want to get an idea of what goes into caring for them. But yeah, so that is it for today's video. Again, I want to stress that if you want to give someone a reptile for Christmas, that you need to communicate with them. It can't just be out of the blue. It needs to be communicated efficiently. You need to make sure that that animal is going to be well cared for, that's going to have everything that it needs to be cared for, and that that person has and can manage and has the means to take care of it. So communication. This is not a just surprise gift. It needs to involve communication with the person. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you for the next Hurtmas video. Thank you.